Would you like to know how I painted these Death Guard? You see, my father... Just... It's alright, guys. We'll forget about that. Uh, Brandon from Grimdark Australia here, and here to give you another painting tutorial on Death Guard. Today we're going to prime these out in Stunnel Res Black, and then come straight in with our first base colour, which is going to be P3's Jack Bone. However, you could use Citadel's Screaming Skull, or any other similar bone colour. With this, we're going to be focusing this as a zenithal highlight almost, and we're just going to come around about 90 degrees and hit all the main areas where light would generally hit. We're going to leave our black primer though in our deeper shadows, but there won't be too much of that. Once you're done with that, we're then going to come in from the top with our next color, which is going to be Vallejo's Sky Blue Grey. However, you could also use something like Citadel's Ulfarn Grey or anything else that's close. So once you're done doing all your characters and all your Death Guard models up with those base colors on the power armor, go through and start basing everything out. As you'll see through this video, I have periods where I'll forget to base out certain colors and just come back and address them. It doesn't really matter too much in which order you do these in, but the easiest part would be just to base them all out at the beginning. So all your metal trims that you would like, you could use Rune Lord Brass or um, an Iron Hand Steel, it just depends with the aesthetic that you're going for. So once you're done with uh, doing all your base colors, we're then gonna come in with a thin down version of AK Interactive's Streaking Grime. Uh, you're gonna thin that down, probably about two part spirits to one part grime. And we're gonna apply this all over our models, over all the details and everything else that we've based out. Now, this is going to be the first of, I believe it's about four unifying washes that we're going to do over the whole thing and we're just going to slowly build these up to help build our rust and dirt and rust deposits uh, all over the crevices of the armor as we go through and do this. What I would like to point out is that throughout this tutorial, you might notice that I change my colors every now and again. Um, yeah, that I wouldn't stress too much about that. These models are up to you guys. It's up to your flavor. If the color isn't quite sitting right with you, just change it. So once we're done with all of our washes, we're gonna go through with a Q-tip with some mineral spirits, and we're just gonna start dabbing that away at the, mainly the open source panels there. Anything that's right out in the open, we're just gonna try and push that streaking grime wash into the crevices, and that's gonna be our first uh, build up layer of dirt and rust and grime all over our models. So 
So once we've got that done, it's pretty much time for us to get into some of the fun stuff. So we've decided to go with a lot of rusty pipes for this method. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is going over anything that we plan on doing as a metal or rust in Typhus Corrosion by Citadel. Um, so this we're just going to apply pretty liberally over everything, um, hoping to get those textures all over it all. And this is going to help us give us that real dirty old crusty metal look. So go around and check all your models and apply this typhus corrosion to any areas where you see fit. You can do this all over the chain, you could do this over the axe heads, you could do it on none of it, or just a little bit. It's totally up to you. So here I decide to do this bottom part as uh, steel and rusty and I'll actually use the uh, Nurgle skulls up the top there and we'll do them a brass colour and add some verdigris just to separate the colours a little bit and break it up a bit. Once you're done with all your typhus corrosion though, we're going to come back in with a Vallejo gunmetal or you can use any other steel colour. and We're just going to dry brush or stipple this over the typhus corrosion. You could technically cut this step with our next steps that we're going to be take with our rusting metals but if you decide that the rusted metals are a little bit too liberal for you at least this way you'll have some steel in the underneath to add a little bit more depth to the uh to the metal colors okay so now once you're done with that we're going to take ak interactive's dark rust deposits and we're going to try and get that a bit thick so you might want to take some out and put it on your palette um, and just let it to dry for a little bit and we want it to get chunky and then what we're going to do is we're going to stipple it over the top of all of our rusted metal that we've started on um, and we're just going to try and be a little bit random with it we're going to cover a lot of this probably 80 percent um, but try and be random with the areas of how thick that you put it on So once you've gone and applied those dark rust deposits all over your models, we're now going to come in with AK Interactive's medium rust deposits. And this one we're going to do a little bit more sparingly and we're going to apply this still pretty liberally over the top of our dark rust deposits. Try and be random with it. Again, you want it to be chunky. So if you can leave it out on the palette to dry up a little bit, or if you've got some building up on the side of the bottle there, even better. Just grab it out, chunk it on, leave it thick. So you can see here guys that I'm just taking these chunks and I'm literally just slapping it on and just letting it stay thick. I'm not trying to thin it out. Um, I'll show you here in the bottle. Uh, you'll see on the side of the wall those chunks there. That's the best bit. That is the, uh, the pork crackling of our rust deposits right now. Just grab those out, be greedy, put it all on there. 
then once we're done with that we're going to come back in and stipple on some more of our gunmetal color that we used before and we're going to stipple that back over very lightly so you probably only want to hit maybe say 25 percent of the metal maybe even less but do it to flavor see what suits you So once you've gone and done all of that, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take AK Interactive's Rust Streaks and we're going to apply this as a wash all over all our rusted areas. This is just going to help blend everything in a little bit better. It's going to darken our rust down a little bit more from the bright color of the rust deposits and it will make it look a little less powdery as the rust deposits tend to dry up and look a little bit more like a powder. Um, this will help alleviate that factor a little bit and keep everything tied in and stop those rust deposits from falling off. So now we're going to take a little bit of Citadel's Riser Rust and we're just going to stipple that in over the top of our metal colour. This is going to be our highlight to the metal. You'll also see that I've added this to some of the leg armor and to some of the holes there. Be very, very careful with how much of this you apply because it can be very hard to dull it back down. I've probably gone a little bit too hard in this scenario, so probably do whatever you see here a little bit less. So as you can see here, I'm just adding a little bit of this riser rust to the tip of the horn and then dabbing it away with my finger. We're going to do pretty much the exact same thing all over the rest of the metal, just dabbing it away with the brush and then dabbing it away with my finger, just to take away some of the brightness so it's not too over the top. So now we're just going to take some plastic wrap and we're going to mask off our Lord of Virulence so we can start airbrushing in our flesh cape. Once we've got that done, we're going to take our Citadel's Bugman's Glow and we're going to put that in the air gun and we're going to start airbrushing down in a zenithal approach. So we're going to try and stay a little focused with this and keep our Bugman's Glow on the centre parts of our membranes, on the higher details and on the top parts of the tubing, just trying to keep our Warlord purple in the recesses. Now we're going to be using Vallejo's Pale Flesh and we're going to be doing another Zenithal top-down approach to this. Um, just make sure that you minimize the overspray, keep your Bugman's Glow and your Warlord Purple in your deeper recesses and if you go around the model with the air gun again just try and minimize the amount of overspray that you get. 
but you could quite as easily just go in with a paintbrush and do some thin layers along the tubing and whatnot. So once you've done that, we're now going to come in with a thinned down version of Citadel's Magos Purple, or you could use any other purple colour you like, and we're just going to need to apply some uh, veins throughout the flesh. Now the Magos Purple tends to be a little bit more translucent than a normal colour, so you can use both. I will use the Magos Purple to do some veins deeper in the membranes, and then I'll use another purple color to come in with a little bit more of a stark contrast to make it appear more on the surface. So go around the model and apply those veins everywhere to all the tubing and the like and get those veins popping. Once that's dried up, we're going to come in with a thin down glaze of the Magos Purple and we're just going to apply that all over our flesh and that's just going to blend in not only the veins that we've popped all over our flesh everywhere, but the skin tones and the colours as well. So now I'll be going through and using Citadel's Nihiluk Oxide. This is an acrylic paint designed to be verdigris. Um, normally I would use an oil paint for this, but I'm just going to show you that the acrylic works just as well. Um, just apply it, do it to flavour. If it's too much, dab away with your finger and get a wet brush loaded with water and push it away. This one's up to you. You decide whether you want this to still look like a brand new piece of brass or whether you'd like it to look like the Statue of Liberty. So now on what I was saying before, we're going to come in and we're going to fix up some of this riser rust that I thought might be a little bit too bright. I'm just going to do that with some AK Interactive uh, Rust Streaks. Now I'm just going to apply this over the top of that and try and smooth that out to the rest of the armor. With the build up of the rest of our unifying washes, this is going to dull it down anyway and it'll be less noticeable than it is now. So now, while I'm going around, the rust streaks that I've applied over the top of the riser rust is beginning to dry out. So I'm just going to start adding a little bit more of the rust streaks around the rest of the model as a part of our unifying wash.
but once our rust streaks has dried up and we're done with that we're going to come back in with a q-tip with mineral spirits and we're going to start pulling that away from the main surfaces of the armor trying to leave that rust streaks to pull up in the edges and in the crevices in the riser rust and just anywhere away from the flat panels as much as we can anywhere with texture it can pull up there that's fine so after that we're going to be coming in with a straight up streaking grime wash all over the whole thing get this all over the armor panels spread it everywhere after that we're then going to be taking a q-tip filled with mineral spirits and we're going to be dabbing away the streaking grime from the panels again leaving our rust grime and dirt build up to sit on the edges of the armor panels in the recesses or anywhere where there might be texture and that'll give us a really nice transition from dirt and grime build up to cleaner parts of the open panels So now we'll be going in with Citadel's Nurgle's Rot. Now it might look a little bit thick there when you're first putting it on, but it does thin out quite a bit once you start spreading it all over. This will just give us a sickly green tinge of fluid all over the membranes and flesh that we've already laid down. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take some AK Interactive's Muddy Puddles. Now this is very similar to the Nurgle's Rot, however instead of being more of a sickly green it gives us a dirty brown water vibe, sort of like some kind of mud or sewerage water coming out of those tubes there and leaking out all over the flesh. So now I'm just going to combine the two together and you'll see that the viscosity between the both two of them will allow them to mix together quite nicely and you'll get some nice tinges of brown and green across any of those fleshy areas. Now I'm just going to bring back some of those flesh pipes a little bit by adding in some purple glazing towards anywhere where the pipe meets the metal um, and that's just going to help bring a little bit more of that flesh tone to the flesh. Go figure. Now I'm just going to add this for a little bit of personal flavour and I'm just going to add some Coelia Green Shade to the metal piping areas that meet the flesh cape. This is just going to help give a little bit more of a sickly green colour and add a little bit more depth to those green tones. So I'm just going to go back in again and fix up a little bit of those flesh tones on the cape. This is up to you. I added a little bit more of a thin down Magos purple just to the recesses of the cape. This is just going to help give us that bruised flesh look to the membranes um, and to me I just think it looks cool. And we're all about that rule of cool. So at this point, take your characters and give them the third coat of streaking grime. Um, apply this liberally all over and this is going to help build up that final layer and then we're going to come in with one more layer of rust streaks over the whole lot just to bring out those ready tones throughout the whole model.
Alright, then go in and hit those open panels with that Q-tip and Mineral Spirits yet again, leaving the, the grime and the build-up to pull up in the recesses again. So now it's time for our final unifying wash of in AK Interactive's Rust Streaks. So we're going to be applying this all over the model again. I will focus this harder where I've left the riser rust on the panels because I've said that I would like to darken that down anyway. Um, but apply that over the whole model, stipple some onto the metal parts that you've already left rusty, up to you. Use your own discretion at this point. Um, and this is gonna be our final wash pass and our final reduction. dab 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 away and remember we're here we're not being too hard with the dabbing we're doing it very lightly and we just want to almost let the sediments and the the pigments just lay where they fall So one last thing, I'm just going to do the uh, smoke on that Lord of Contagion. I just paint it up with white, you can use any colour white that you like. Um, and then I'm just going to come in with some Coelia green shade through the air gun and just going to put that on. I'll do it lighter towards the start of the smoke and I'll do it heavier towards the end of the smoke. Pretty simple, you can follow that or you can do any other colour that you like. So once we've done that guys, that's going to be our tutorial done and our Death Guard model should be looking nice and grim, dark, rusty and like you don't want to touch that without a tetanus shot. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I hope you got something useful out of this uh, to take to your own models. If you did, send me a picture and let me know how you go, but enjoy and I'll see you on the next one.